Hello and howdy everyone. I'm here to talk about seeking a friend for the end of the world. And I thought it was okay. I'm going to give it a six. I mean, I thought it was fair. Um, not terribly exciting, not terribly moving, not terribly funny, uh, but all a little of those things. Um, just, uh, just not great. Good and it's always making an effort, I felt, and and it was it was okay. I think it's definitely worthy of a six. Um, it's about well, the end of the world, uh, and two people uh, who have uh, pretty much lost everything that uh, they have um, in the weeks running up to the apocalypse. Uh, find each other, and well, you know, find love as well. Um, it's not too original, um, but it uh, still, with the backdrop of the world ending, it, it felt, uh, I don't know, real at times, you know, it, it, despite that, that uh, you know, uh, setting, it, it felt real, and, and, you know, it felt honest and true. Um, so, again, it, it did have, you know, some nice qualities to it. Uh, I rented it mostly because uh, I love Kira Knightley. Um, I love to stare at Kira Knightley. Um, she's just amazingly beautiful to me, and I will see anything with Kira Knightley in it. And <laughs> I've actually been putting off seeing uh, Anna Karenina uh, just because. I don't know, it's Anna Karenina, and I'm a 34-year-old man. Um, but uh, I figured, well, in, you know, in the meantime, instead of watching this, you know, period piece, I'll go ahead and watch this uh, supposedly comedy uh, with, with Steve Carell. Uh, Steve Carell's good in it. He's always good. Um, he doesn't really do any stretching here. Um, plays a character you're, you know, very familiar with him playing. Um... The two of them together are okay. Uh, I mean, it's not like fantastic chemistry, but it's it's good chemistry. Um, they dominate the film. I will say that they're at least in every scene. You know, if, if not together, then then one of them is in the scene. So they're definitely carrying the film. Um, everyone else is just kind of a a blip you know, in the story. And they, it's kind of weird, they get kind of bigger named actors, um, or at least recognizable actors, but uh, like Martin Sheen, um, uh, Patton Oswald. Uh, let's see if their names are on the back here. Um, no, you know, they aren't uh, at all. Um, God, what's his name? I need to think of his name. No, he's still not on there. Gosh, why can't I think of his name? He's the bald dude. He's Children's Hospital. Uh, he's got brothers. Man, that's Cordry. Rob Cordry he used to be on The Daily Show. Uh, Rob Cordry, Patton Oswald, um, the mom from uh, Friday Night Lights. Uh, she's on American Horror Story as well. They're all in there, but they're only in there for a little bit. Uh, I guess that goes uh, to loyalty and power to the uh, uh, writer and director, um, Lorraine Scafaria. I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right. Uh, Lorraine Scafaria. Um, she is a screenwriter. This is her directorial debut. I think it's a fine debut, and obviously I respect that, uh, you know, a Artur, a writer and director. Um, she also uh, was a producer on this, I believe. And, well, no, I don't see her name. But she wrote and directed it and, uh, you know, trying to keep her vision intact. Uh, and I have to respect that. Um, she, let's see, she wrote uh, Nicanor's Infinite Playlist. There was something else I was trying to remember that she wrote, um, and I'm not remembering it now. Nicanora, I would say that Nicanor was a better film, uh, if not a better story. Um... I thought it looked all right. I, you know, it just had a very independent feel. 
you know, kind of quirky music here and there. Um, you know, just, I don't know what else to say. It was just kind of, uh, it wasn't terribly exciting, you know. It took its time. Um, uh, it wasn't very complex. Uh, just kind of a sweet little story. Um, again, I felt I summed it up, and in, in it's not, you know, much. You know, it, it, it never gives you too much of, of anything. It's never really melodramatic, uh, which it could easily have been. Um, you know, it just plays it cool. You know, it takes this end of the world scenario and plays it cool. Um, I, I mean, I, I could have used a lot more, I guess, just about the world that they're living in, um, and whatever, I guess I, I just felt that, uh, well, no, it all seemed to fit rather nicely, I was about to say that they were alone in the world, but they kind of are, and, uh, you know, I thought it took an interesting, you know, glimpse at what it would be like for the world to end, and, and for, you know, society to, to crumble. Um, uh, some other people in the movie a Adam Brody uh, who I you know look familiar but I, I'm not familiar uh, Derek Luke um, William Peterson uh, again they all have like glorified cameo cameo roles um, I really don't know what else to say about the movie it's just kind of like alright ho hum um, but, you know, it was sweet, and the acting, you know, really good. Um, and, it, you know, true, honest story uh, about something, you know, preposterous, we would hope, preposterous. Um, so, yeah, there you go. I really can't think of anything else to say. It's just like, you know, okay. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of romantic comedies uh, anyway, but I, you know, I didn't mind this, you know, I didn't mind this. And Kira Knightley uh, is tremendously beautiful. She she does not, like, blow the lid off the place um, in this film, but, but she's, uh, she's always so gorgeous. Um, and, yeah, I will never complain about looking at her. Again, the reason I'm watch this film. The only reason I watch this film is is to look at her. Uh, as will be the case with Anna Karenina and most likely any movie that Karen Knightley puts out. Uh, so there you go. I think I'm done talking about it. That's uh, Seeking a Friend uh, for the End of the World and I give it a solid six. Thanks much.